James goes on to set the record straight. He continues to write because now he addresses an issue that Israel has dealt with for generations that both good and evil come from God. James wants to set the record straight in these dark times. And so in essence, he says, I don't want you to confuse trials and temptations. Trials are God's way of testing your faith. How much do you love him? How committed are you to him? How committed are you to the calling? But now temptation comes from another place. Temptation is an urge and an inclination, an inclination, inward urge to do something wrong. And God does not tempt us to do wrong. Remember these people had been scattered and now they are exposed to new cultures and behaviors and belief systems contrary to their own. They have been exposed to new gods and new forms of worship to these idols. And what they are experiencing is a temptation to do something that they had been instructed to resist the temptation to do. Earlier, I mentioned that our current state of affairs in this country has left us vulnerable to multiple voices and truth has been compromised and redefined and questioned. And we are repeating a time in history where every man did what was right in his own eyes. When you're in the dark, it's difficult to discern trials from temptation. Mm. Let me say that again. When you're in the dark, it's difficult to discern trials from temptation. For sometimes in the dark, they look the same, but they produce different results. My, my, my. In the dark, in the dark, somebody say in the dark, in the dark, they look the same, but they produce different results. I really, I wasn't going to do this, but I really want to do this because when James opens the letter, he opens the letter with count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. And I want to take that word and support it with old Testament scripture so that we can see that that temptation was not the same as the temptation that God doesn't do. So go with me to Genesis, the 22nd chapter, and let's support this with scripture. Genesis 22 and one, because this is something that the Jews used uh, when they supported the fact that God, both God, both good and evil came from God. So let's go back. Let's fall back to Genesis 22 and one. And it says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. So the word temptation that James uses is the same word tempt that is used here in Genesis. What it means is that God tested Abraham because if you read on, it tells you that the temptation was really a test of Abraham's faith. So let's just digress a moment and let's read it. And said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Abraham responded to God and said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son, whom thou lovest, whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering up on one of the mountains, which I tell thee of. Now it sounds like he's being tempted to do something wrong, to do something sinful. 
And let's keep reading. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, abide ye here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship (laughs) and come to you. Mind you, he has been tempted of God, but he's going to worship. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham's response, my son. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went up together. Here is what we see. We see that in him, Abraham understood that this had to be a test. He knew the God that he had just learned of, the God that he had built a relationship with, would not certainly ask him, to kill, to do something sinful to his own flesh and blood. But he continued to follow instructions because he believed that the God that called him would provide in the middle of this test. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar, laid the wood in order, bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son, to follow through with what seems like a temptation. And the angel of the Lord called out of heaven to him and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. He said, lay not thy hand upon the lad. Neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram. Good God. Tell somebody God got a ram. He got a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. So James says, don't be misled. Don't be in error. Trials come. Testing comes to make you strong. But temptation is on a trajectory of destruction. 